Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my basement. It's good to be here with you all today. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. So if you have your Bible with you, why don't you head there now? We're going to be right in the middle of Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. And this is what we read in Matthew chapter 6. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that you may so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Let's jump down to verse 16. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Amen. You know, to be honest, I I find this, this chapter in Matthew's Gospel to be one of the, the most humbling and also comforting chapters in all of Scripture. It's certainly hum- humbling, and and I think it's humbling for two reasons. N- number one, this chapter is humbling because it it reminds us that even our most righteous acts are full of sin. Even the most righteous things that we do, prayer, giving to the poor, fasting, are, are just chock full of sin. For example, how many of us who have ever prayed in front of others, whether at you know, a prayer meeting or in a home group, how many of us can say that at one time or another, after finishing our, our prayer, we, we didn't think to ourselves, I wonder how that sounded to everyone else in the group. I mean, I wonder if they caught that I, I threw in that verse there at the end. I wonder if that sounded spiritual enough. I, I wonder if, if they heard how eloquent that was. I wonder if they they sense the boldness in that prayer. All of us, at one time or another, can say that we've we've done that. We've thought about what other people were were thinking in regards to our our prayer. This is hypocrisy. We're we're supposed to be addressing our Father in heaven, and yet we're worried about what other everybody else around us is thinking. All of us have done this. I've done this. You've done this. And Jesus reminds us in this chapter that our our most righteous acts are just full of sin. This should be a great reminder that that we are so desperately in need of the cross of Jesus. As we reflect on the fact that our righteous acts are full of sin, we we should be driven right to the cross, reminded that that we need Jesus' blood to cover us that we might be forgiven. It's incredibly humbling. And secondly, this passage is humbling because it reminds us that God sees everything. I mean, three times in in this chapter, we read this. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That is a really humbling thought, that everything that you've ever done and ever will do is seen by the eyes of our Father in heaven. And unlike unlike us, who who can just so easily justify or excuse away or rationalize our own sin, our Father sees our sin through through the lens of His own holiness. He can't excuse away, He can't justify it or rationalize it. And so... How humbling is this that that every act that we commit is seen by our God in heaven? I I know of 
no, no other truth that is, is more motivating to, to keep us from sin, to, to have us cast away, throw aside our sin, than this, than this fact, than this reality. That, that from the moment you wake up in the morning to the moment you go to sleep, and even as you sleep, your actions are, are before the eyes of a holy God. And I think that we, we should live in light of this reality, that when we wake up in the morning, we should be saying to ourselves, I'm about to, to live this entire day, and every thought, every word, every action... Every attitude within my heart, it's going to be seen. It's going to be brought before the eyes of a holy God. It's incredibly humbling. But as I said, this passage is also, I believe, deeply comforting as well. Because this passage reminds us that, that the one who sees our every action, this holy God, is also our Father. Three times we're told in this passage, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Jesus is reminding us in Matthew 6 that the, the God who sees our every action, he's not, like a, he's not like a state highway patrolman who hides himself or state highway patrolwoman and, and, and then waits to see you speeding, waits to catch you doing something wrong and then can nab you, then can, can catch you in the act. That is not what our, our Father in heaven is like at all. When we reflect on the fact that this God is our Father, then, then we can rejoice in the fact, we can take comfort in the fact that because He sees us, He can protect us. You know, I, I can protect my son to a, to a large extent when I'm in the same house as him, when, a, when I'm in the same general vicinity as him. But when he's on the other side of town, I, I can't protect my son. But because you are always before your father, he can protect you. Because you're always before your father, he can provide for you. He, he knows what you need even more than you do. And so his, his provision is available to you because he, he sees you in whatever particular space you happen to be in. And then lastly, because he sees you, he can reward you. He can reward you. Three times we're told in Matthew 6, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. He'll reward you by helping you to meet someone else's need when you give financially to the cause of another. He will reward you by answering your prayer. He will reward you by providing that breakthrough you need as you fast. Because our Father sees us, He can reward us. So again, this is, in my mind, one of the, the most humbling, but also one of the most comforting passages in all of Scripture. We're reminded that even our most righteous acts are just full of sin full of hypocrisy, hypocrisy at times. We're reminded that God sees everything, that from the moment we wake up to when we go to bed, He sees it. It's before His eyes. But we're also reminded that the one who sees us is our Father, the one who provides, the, the, the one who protects, the one who blesses us and gives us a good reward. So I hope that's encouraging for you. I hope you, you check out Matthew chapter 6 today. It's a really good read. And... Uh, Certainly I'll talk to you soon.